What does a beautiful future look like to you? You can flip a negative mood on its head. This was a talk that was all over the place, but then New York, you are all over the place. There are experiences that you just don't get anywhere else. Hi, I'm Entertainment Weekly's Christian Holub, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this 92nd Street Y Talks event about Apple TV Plus's Servant. We have Toby Kebbell, Lauren Ambrose, and Nell Tiger-Free in conversation today. Okay, so I wanted to start by uh, going back to the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, because it just so happened that I visited you guys on the set of Servant Season 2, uh, first or second week of March, and I went to Philly, talked to you guys on the set, took a bus back that night, and then the next day, the lockdown had started, and I, I haven't left my house that much since then. Um, so, but I know you guys were you guys were in the middle of everything, and I know because I was there, so I just wanted to ask, you know, what was that like when, when that kind of shutdown status quo came through? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, <clears throat> it didn't seem like it was going to be a huge deal. You know, we were in the middle of episode six. We were, you know, having great fun working with Boris, playing Uncle George and him kind of in full swing and then suddenly we're all on the on the stoop of the street and we're like, ah, this won't, this, we'll be back in a week. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back in a week. Laura's yeah. going to drive home. We'll be back in a week. We'll be fine. I'll have a nap and we'll come back. Yeah. We had a big meeting on the on the fake street uh, outside of the, the brownstone, the whole crew and the whole cast and we all stood there and it was sort of like what do we do? What do we do? And I know Knight was really mm. on the fence with like, should we pull the plug? What are we supposed to do here? And um, it was decided we would all take a two week hiatus <laughs> and then <laughs> Which did reassess not end up and come back. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. the world shut down. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and we all went home for six months or Ever. something. <laughs> Forever. But then miraculously, we, we all came back to work in a bubble. Right. Uh, to finish yeah, the season, we all lived and worked together, which was an extraordinary feat on the part of every every employee and the whole company yeah. really to make that happen to get everybody back to work. Yeah, the crazy we were very lucky. You know, back. they were they were able to get us to test three times a week and in different zones, mm. zone A, B, B plus, C. You know, and it worked well. It was it was a lot of extra hard work. You know, it's a very heavy series anyway. Yeah, you know, you've got this very serious situation occurring in the world. So, yeah, uh, you know, it, it's tough. It's really tough. It's really tough to come back yeah. and shoot that way. But we were and very every, all of the you know you know we we got the sort of uh, built in mask break because we're actors, which comes with its own vulnerability. But uh, we could take off our masks to work and to do our to do our scenes um but the you know the entire crew doing this like fine motor work uh -huh. and had to uh wearing masks and ppe and shields and this and that and i mean it was a it was a lot to um and yeah all the all the testing and, but of course feel incredibly grateful to be you know some of the few actors who were able to work with other actors yeah uh, on a set and uh, and actually be in production, and part of that is because our our show is a version of being in lockdown already mm -hmm. with a, a small family yeah. in four walls. For the most part. Totally, um, yeah. I mean, I wanted to say that uh, whatever you guys did, you know, it's not like there's something around episode six or seven where where suddenly the show feels different, or or if you didn't know better, you could tell that there's a pandemic happening or whatever. So I guess <laughs> it was just all these things you had to do kind of off camera and and yeah. uh, on the set. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, but it took a lot of trust, and you know, it was, sure, you know, it was really trusting your colleagues and coworkers. And, it was a pretty extraordinary experience. It occurs to me, like, do you think it helped that it happened in season two and you guys already kind of had that 
that grounding with each other as opposed to, you know, if it had happened at the same point in the first season? I don't know. I mean, God only knows. I mean, who knows? But I, I think that the fact that we all had this kind of, we, we had a relationship already. I think, I, I don't know, I don't want to speak for you a lot, but like, for me, the COVID and coming back in halfway through season two and all of us being thrown together in this kind of weird dystopian situation, I felt like we all had to rally together quite a lot and sort of lean on each other. I definitely lent on my castmates uh, throughout that experience because it was, it was scary and weird mm -hmm. and different and like nothing any of us has ever experienced before. So thank God that like we all get along and we all, I found some comfort in being around each other. Like, because we were on the same building, like I knew that if I was having a bad day or felt nervous, I could go down to Lawrence for a cup of tea or knock on Toby's door for a vegan meal or <laughs> you know, go annoy Rupert and Georgia. And like, you know, I'm, I'm really lucky that I had those, those guys around me and in that space um, during that time. Otherwise, I think I probably would have gone fully nuts, like more insane <laughs> than I already am, which wouldn't have been good I mean, for anyone. Sure. In short, Christian, yeah. You he's, we he's had some nice right, family though. dinners. Yeah. The fact that we'd already established e each other as a bonding, that was helpful. Because, yeah, as Lauren said, we yeah. had family dinners. And... My birthday. <laughs> yeah. Toby, so, did you cook during those dinners? Or, or what did you guys we eat? We all did. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the family style, right? You know, so some yeah. bread or a dessert or, you know, and, and Lauren's an excellent cook and Nell... Nell's done one of the best risottos I've had in, in, a, in a long time. I'm not even kidding. Toby, you're actually going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> getting getting yeah. a cooking accolade from Toby is like, it's a really big deal. A baking accolade from Lauren is like, and a cooking accolade from Toby <laughs> It's a it's it's a big deal for me. Like I made them these little chickpea frittata things, and everyone liked them, and I thought I was going to weep inside. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Speaking of food, um, Toby, I think you know you've you've talked about this a little before. I, I've maybe even asked you about it, but just in case you know that the, there are people watching who um, you know haven't read previous interviews with you guys or anything. Can you just talk a little bit about um, the show, uh, the food on the show? Because obviously uh, such a big part of the show is the food that, that Sean is cooking all the time. Um, and how much of that is like actually being made and you guys are actually eating and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the food's a huge part. Honestly, that, that big part comes from Drew DiTomo. He's, uh, mm. he's our resident chef and he makes everything that appears on camera. We do it together, you know. There was a lot of interpreting what Tony Bascala, you know, our season one creator, had had written. You know, mm -hmm. we were like, so, so how do we do this in a gastro way, or how do we make this? So, me and Drew got very bonded, um, and we we're all very bonded with Drew. I mean, he's the missing part of the family meals, you know. Drew, yeah, he's always there. Whatever, we love him. <laughs> yeah, whatever excellent food he made. So um, he he and I actually season two. There's much less food. And we were, mm -hmm. you know, we were in uproar. We were like, what? Why is there? But we had extra <laughs> bits. You know, we had the pizza, you know, but that was, you know, so much fun to make, but actually just ends up as being a kind of a, a, a crux in the, in the episode, that excellent episode. So, That's yeah, it, the food's always brilliant. It's always good to make, you know, and, and because we're on a set that actually works. You know, we did have a, a pancake off, and Lauren won hands down <laughs> by about that. And it was on Pancake Day. It was Shrove what, Tuesday yeah, in the UK. Oh God, they they don't celebrate know. in the US. Yeah. We didn't that even Tuesday. know that it was Pancake Day when we started having a pancake off. I didn't participate <laughs> yeah, in okay. yeah. And then I found out it was Shrove Tuesday. I was so excited. It was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren won. Thanks. Yeah, I do. Pancakes is, is actually the thing I do best. Yeah, it was excellent. Make pancakes. Yeah, but that's the nice thing. It's because of all that food. You know, it encourages everyone to cook and expand. You know, it's not often. I've never. You know, I've I've been invited to dinner a few times with with other colleagues on different jobs, but it's very rare you actually talk that much about cooking. But cooking is mm -hmm. such a big part. We all kind of participate in it. You know, so it's it's great fun. It's great. Oh, fun. that's awesome. Um, you mentioned the uh, the pizza that plays a little role in this season. That's uh, I really like that arc. Those couple episodes where you guys have the the big pizza oven, and I saw that when I was on set. The the big oven that had been built and stuff. Um, and I guess the, the the pizza oven and the attic are kind of the new 
bases in the house or, or new kind of things that have changed um, from that weren't there in season one. So, um, you know, how kind of refreshing or, or interesting was it to to play around with those new spaces or, or those new things in the space? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I spend the majority of season two inside that attic. Um, mm -hmm. I get brief moments of release, but pretty much all of season two, uh, at least my big moments, they're all in that attic. And it was really fun because I think I think we all got so used to, to the rooms that we were working with in season one. And then all of a sudden this new room was in, introduced, this new space, mm -hmm. this new opportunity to like work it out. And, you know, every item in the attic and every, every move that Leanne makes in the attic, it, it's, you know, it, it represents things in the past or her childhood or what's coming. And, mm. you know, it's, yeah, it was, so for me, I spent most of the season up there. So I, I missed the house kind of <laughs> down there having fun. Yeah. Having chat. So I was like, guys, can I come down? <laughs> but um, yeah, it was definitely, it was, it was a big part of the, of the shooting process for me, kind of embodying that attic space and helped with the claustrophobia of the way Leanne's feeling. So yeah, it was pretty cool. It's dusty. Uh, and, 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 the, and the pizza oven too. I mean, just to say that Gino and Karen do such great work. They really are set, you know, set decorators and they do such mm -hmm. beautiful work. They actually had to go away partway through the second season and, and they were so missed. You know, it's impossible yeah. to do that job. You know, without them, they just fill in so many of the gaps. Um, and the pizza oven too, you know, we, really the work actually was the dough. Me and, me and Drew spent so long figuring out dough and seeing how long we could refrigerate dough for. I mean, we're like, mm -hmm. We were trying to see if it's 72 hour this, 72 hours and this. Getting obsessed yeah. with refrigerated dough, this has too much condensation. Than walking yeah. past the test kitchen and seeing Toby and Drew just like in it, like in the little <laughs> test kitchen on set and seeing those two working their magic and creating their geniusnessness. Because Toby doesn't give himself enough credit because Toby is such an important part of the of the cooking of the show too. Cause Toby's an amazing chef. And so, like, walking past them and seeing them create all that stuff and maybe getting to eat some of it when they're in their <laughs> genius mode is it's just great. It's such an important part of the atmosphere. That's awesome. Um, and I think my favorite thing of, of, of about the pizza oven is that um, it shows up and, and the characters are, are kind of uh, cooking up this scheme to be like a, a fake kind of Grubhub restaurant and stuff, which I love. And so I'm very into the... The, the new visuals of the pizza oven. I'm, I'm following along the logistics of their plan. And that set me up to be totally surprised by the, the end of that episode when um, Dorothy reveals that she poisoned the pizza to, to um, knock out Leanne and stuff. So um, Lauren, I just wanted to, to ask about that um, and, and kind of, you know, Dorothy's um, journey or, or, or arc this season, because that, that felt like, um, you know, representative of, of her stuff on the season as, as a whole, but that moment kind of a particular turning point in terms of her really kind of taking control um, of the action or trying to and, and surprising the other characters. Um, what did you like kind of about, about playing that for her? Yeah, I thought it was uh, interesting and really a departure from uh, season one when she's so vulnerable and the, mm -hmm. it's this mystery if she's going to wake up and are we going to like upset this delicate balance and you know is this tower of fragile tower going to crumble yeah. and what's going to happen and um now she's presented with this very real problem of you know my baby is missing she sees the doll for what it is at the end of season one and so now she she's basically going to take control and and that moment that you're referring to at the end of uh episode three I think it's maybe? Four, three or four yeah three i think with the pizza oven and uh yeah, and she, she decides, okay, you know, these boys have been screwing this up and now I'm going to take over. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, that's kind of interesting. It's like this web of lies that the, that, uh, the boys have created and mm -hmm. keep her, get, you know, keep her guessing and keep her uh, in the dark about facing this trauma. And, um, and so now she's, she's going to find this baby. She's going to get her kid back no matter what. So yeah, it, that was a, a turning point, <laughs> and and you know, with the the hot oven as a as a metaphor for it all. Yeah, um, yeah. and we know, you know, kind of from from 
the way Dorothy talks about her job and does her job, that she seems like a, you know, if not workaholic, someone who likes having things to do. And so, yeah, um, type once a there's this, yeah, like, this, this sorry, ransom sorry, plot yeah. is like, she has something she can wrap her head around yeah. and like do She's actions. She's like Denzel. She's like, Denzel. <laughs> She's like on a mission, going to get her baby back no matter what. So, which is, uh, you know, it's great. It's fun to play. I mean, she definitely goes... Uh, this kid, I mean, there was stuff that I was faced with having to figure out how to do that was really challenging for me. And I mean, in a fun way, it was like, oh, man, read the script. Like, oh, man, how how on earth am I going to do yeah. that? And how, how are Nell and I going to do that stuff? We did some crazy stuff. Have these intense scenes. And, um, you know, and you sort of get this this face off between, uh, you know, maternal rage and like teenage will and mm-hmm. um um, all in this new set of this attic. And uh, um, yeah, that was kind of a, a different theme for us this year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Nell, I wanted to, to bring you into this too, because Lauren said something that I, that I think is um, kind of applicable to Leanne too. We're like kind of in season one and, and towards the beginning of the season, I think both characters are kind of treated as, passive objects almost by by the men in the show um not just sean and um julian but even um uncle george and and stuff to a certain degree like oh we just have to keep dorothy in the dark blah 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 oh we just have to do make sure leanne does this that or the other thing and um, and leanne also has uh you know i think in, in various ways she she takes control of the situation um a little more using her powers a little more. She seems more in control of her, her sexuality and, and her kind of female power in that way. Um, if you wanted to talk about kind of playing that and how maybe kind of different she was from when we met her in season one. Yeah. I think that, you know, <clears throat> I think it's uh, episode six or seven. I think it's episode seven that Leanne kind of has this turning point. It was right at the end of episode seven. She's standing under the glass and there's this there's this change in her. There's been a slow change building up in her since the beginning of season two. But um, mm. that's, I think, where you feel the real switch and she kind of rejects this old story that she's been told. Because, you know, all of our thoughts and our feelings or whatever, they're just stories that people tell us, really. And, like, you know, <clears throat> that was just this story that she had heard and she kind of rejects it and kind of steps into herself as this young woman who doesn't only maybe have this like ethereal power to her and something otherworldly, but she also just has power as a young woman. And I think she's starting to realize that and, you know, finding her strength in being able to decide what she wants to do for herself as opposed to always having everything decided for her. Um, So that was really, really fun to play. It was definitely challenging at, at points and, you know, my most challenging scenes this season were with Lauren and thank God for her because, you know, she's just, I mean, you, Lauren just has such the, an amazing energy and presence and like bouncing off of her, I think was what made me able to kind of reach those, those darker points. Um, so, you know what, it's just like the nurture of like the, my cast and, you know, uh, Knight and our directors and, and people around us that, made it made it okay and made it accessible for me to get to those places so it was a lot of fun and uh i'm just yeah i'm excited to keep her growing and keep her changing awesome um yeah toby let's uh let's let's finish the trio and kind of talk about sean's journey this season a little bit um because we were just talking about the food and, and, and all the, the stuff you do with the with the food on the show. Obviously, Sean is very much about his cooking. And right. and though it's it's kind of in those areas that he's been hit by kind of the, 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 the supernatural stuff that's kind of affected everybody differently. He's had problems with his taste. And, and this season, you know, he's still got stuff going on with his hand and stuff. And um, it's, you know, it seems to kind of be pushing him away a little bit from, from the kind of cynical attitude that, uh, that he definitely had when we met him. Um, what would you talk, how would you kind of describe his kind of struggle with, with faith almost, uh, this season? Yeah, uh, absolutely. That was <clears throat> quite prevalent throughout the scripts that I was reading. And, you know, I had to kind of, especially with constantly wearing that bandage, I mean, I had to, you know, summon 
some Jack Nicholson in Chinatown and appreciate that he's now with a nose bandage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, if he can do it with a nose bandage, I can do it with a hand. <laughs> um, it, it, it was those things. It's that he's living in this place where things are actually having cause and effect, which isn't usual with superstition. Usually you kind of believe it. You, you're like, mm-hmm. that, oh, shouldn't I? Shouldn't I have done that with the jacket? What am I? So once he has these, you know, realizations that maybe that's what's getting us closer, he gets caught up in this, mm-hmm. you know, the idea is belief. The way I'm, I'm playing it and, and getting to it, it was, was that it was the superstition. You know, how do I suddenly out of the blue believe? Superstition's the path. So once you start to get mm-hmm. superstitious about, oh, I, well, I shouldn't do that, and that's, and I start to plot out and have plans for myself, that was what was so relieving about Lauren's character and her brilliant portrayal of Dorothy suddenly being like, my baby's gone. So where is mm-hmm. my baby? Someone has stolen my baby. Mm-hmm. It kind of takes that pressure off Sean of thinking that he's got to, oh, we're on a new path. Okay, well, yeah, no, 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 no that keeps happening and so that and it might, it's got to be this girl she came in so he's just trying his best to figure out and that's why the the food kind of took a back seat because that's what he mm-hmm. can throw himself into was how does he fathom how to make these flavors work that's keeping work alive i'm i'm still part of society once that kind of goes out of the window and they're kind of hibernating and hiding all of these things um especially from the police you know that's what the other element that i really like mm-hmm. the police suddenly come in and there's some excellent scenes later later on in the season where, you know, me and me and uh, Lauren are with the cop, and one of us is selling it for real. You know, one of us yeah. is like, "Where is my fucking baby?" And one yeah. of us is like, uh, "You know, because the, the crazy lady wants to know." Where her baby is. <laughs> uh, it was so tricky for for the pair of us and for the for the actress playing the police officer. So. Uh, great fun just great fun to play all of those layers upon layers of things and yeah tricky I mean I went to Lauren and I was like what I suddenly believe it what she's like <laughs> just, maybe it's this and and that's the beauty of having a great cast it's not just that you're you know with great actors who are brilliant and have done their homework it's that you can also rely on them to go am I being ridiculous why is this <laughs> suddenly <laughs> the and you find your own way, you know, it's not, it's, it's more like therapy, you know, you kind of find your own way to it and go, I got to do that. That's how I've got to get there. There's only, I, I have no option. I can't rewrite seven episodes, so I've got to get there somehow. And, and that's it. You know, that's the joy of it really. Yeah. Ultimately. That totally I thought it was a really, good. a very beautiful, a very beautiful storyline of, of a person who's, you know, made, you know, having this crisis of faith and, and right. it's, you know, he was such a skeptic before, and now, oh my God, is this is this faith creeping in? I'm like, mm-hmm. what do I believe? It was, uh, and I thought Toby did such a beautiful job in portraying it, but yeah, really hard to figure it out from inside it for sure. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like something that happens kind of maybe mo- multiple times to, to characters on this show is they start out by by pretending something or, or pretending to believe something and then the fakeness becomes real and right. maybe it becomes fake again. But it's like the, the, the line, you know, I, I sometimes think of it as like a dreamy tone or, or a surreal tone, just kind of the way it mo- the show moves between kind of fakery, putting on an act and no, believing for real and, and stuff like that that I'm sure is, is, is hard to, uh, to nail. Yeah. And I, and I think, honestly, what's been so nice is it's kind of easier to understand because we've all been trapped at home. So a lot mm-hmm. of people have been sitting there with a kind of, this is my life, it's amazing. And that fakery <laughs> becomes very apparent that that's fakery. And then yeah. those people are like, oh, I'm, I'm terror. I've got, I've got no ability. What am I doing with myself? And then you get to stay at home and focus on yourself for a minute, which does take a few months to kind of refocus on yourself. It, it's been useful, but that's what we're in. You know, it's mm-hmm. just coincidental yeah. that that's what everyone else is starting to get some experience of. That's what it's like yeah. being in that house. You're with this horrible trauma and no mm-hmm. one really wants to look at it, but everyone keeps opening the door and having a peek and, oh, it smells bad and it looks awful. <laughs> it's that It's that thing. Do you want, does anyone want to see my heart? It's made of you. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, good thing. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think we do, we all have such turbulent storylines like, each individual of the core four of us like experiences 
one reality and then all of a sudden we do a sharp right turn into a totally different way of thinking and you know mm-hmm. it, and it is hard to keep up sometimes with your own storyline and your own yeah, brain and like try and and try and connect these dots and make sure that you're being true to the character like i've definitely as tope said earlier i've definitely turned to toby at some point and been like toby am i being completely ridiculous like i've definitely done that or like turned to one of my classmates and been like and was one doing making any sense and you have to like step back from it and take a breath and just be like recenter yourself and try and figure it out as to what makes sense to you and like make that decision so like as as both of these guys said, like we are just lucky that we all have the ability to turn to each other, and you you know your classmates going to tell you the truth, you mm-hmm. know. So it's it's really good to have that. I I love that because that reminds me of one of my favorite um, moments from the final episodes of season two, which is. Um, when they invite uh, uh, Dorothy and Julian's dad over for like the, the holiday dinner party and, and he brings his young girlfriend along and beforehand he's in the car outside, the dad, the girlfriend and, and Julian and the girlfriend, <laughs> the, the girlfriend asks like, wait, so do they have a baby or <laughs> don't they? And Rupert just goes, they had a baby and then it was fake and then it was real and now it's fake again. Keep up. <laughs> and I, like, it sounds like that's, yeah. this is yeah. for the viewers and, and maybe actors a little bit too of like, okay, where are they again? Like, what's the current <laughs> status quo? Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Awesome. Well, you know, kind of building off that and, and, and fake things becoming uh, real and, and stuff, I wanted to ask you guys, um, uh, Lauren and Toby, about kind of where we where we leave Sean and Dorothy at the end of this season, because, you know, for so much of the show, they've been lying to each other or one of them has been lying to the other one. Um, and yet that that moment where Dorothy's locked herself in the room and is threatening to kill herself and and it's very intense and, and Sean is, is uh, screaming at her. That felt like a real kind of breakthrough. Like even if they aren't necessarily being totally honest with each other, that's like, like, like that's that moment felt like, yeah, they're finally talking to each other on this really primal um, emotional level. Um, How did you guys feel about, about playing that and and where they kind of end up at the end of the season? Well, it definitely started, um, we're pretty divergent and, you know, and I, I'm uh, pursuing this reality of finding the baby and he's trying to keep all of the balls in the air with, with Rupert's character as well. And, and um, yeah, by the end, they, they find their way back to each other. We're about to start shooting season three. So I don't know for how long, but they find their way back. (laughs) To, together and um, and I think you know that this this show is about a lot of things and about being human and it's it's exploring these these big ideas through the genre and um, these big ideas of humanity like what is <laughs> loss and what is it to be married and what is it to grow up and individuate um, and, and yeah, so this couple, you know, the, the track of this couple is, is interesting because they can be just awful to each other, really <laughs> horrible in their language and in yeah. their distrust of each other. But um, there's, there is this fundamental love that keeps them together through all of this trauma. My hope for them is, you know, they will eventually come full circle to a wholeness and find their way to be able to grieve this this issue you know this is a couple who cannot grieve they can't bear to look at the problem so yeah but that by the end of the season two we found ourselves you know i was vindicated and my efforts and Mm -hmm. he was vindicated in his burgeoning faith and um and we met Mm -hmm. so that was uh it was, it was it was so much fun to play um, for the pair of us. I mean, actually, I had the better side of that because I got to actually <laughs> reveal and scream out how much pain I'm in. Mm-hmm. So with all of the other underlying stories, it was such a nice opportunity in the finale to sort of st- sit there and, you know, Lauren's playing still, 
you know, four different layers of things. <laughs> Sean, my character, actually just got to scream for a, mm-hmm. for a brief second, if only for a second, as loud as the pain really felt. And that was that was great to play. It's always great to get to scream at, at full volume and say <laughs> what you mean. Um, but it was so nice to do that without being face to face also, you know, through the door, which was a great kind of camera setup. Technically they cut out the door and they put the camera lens in. So it was as mm. close as it could possibly be to the frame and all these very clever technical things are so just through a slit. I could almost just see Lauren's shoe and it was just enough to be like, I can't quite get in. So it still felt mm-hmm. like there was a door. There was just enough of it available. And it just, it, it's, it's great to have that moment between them because Sometimes, if you can't see, like, why? Wh- how do they still? They still love each other. Do they love each? Does he really love her? Does she really love him? Mm-hmm. Those, the, not saying that abusive situations are a sign of love and affection, but sometimes that shouting, that volume of shouting, that mm-hmm. kind of fury at your partner, is because you care so much. Not the same as coming in, screaming your head off, constantly screaming, having constant argument. It's just that level of I have to tell you. How much this hurts, and what was nice is in episode two or three, or one or two, we have a little moment where it, 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 it's a precursor. You start to see, ah, oh, mm-hmm. okay, maybe that's what's occurring. But that was what's so nice about it. And of course, it has a bunch of other layers, but great to play as well. You know, <laughs> awesome. Um, well, now I know uh, uh, Rupert isn't here, but I was wondering if you could t- talk a little bit about uh, Leanne and Julian's relationship kind of um, reaching the next level, which I, which I would apply not even to having sex, but to her bringing him back from the dead. They, they yeah. have some uh, intense Yeah, that's a big moment, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, too. I mean, yeah, I think that there was always this kind of simmering tension between Leanne and Julian right from, you know, episode two of season one and um you know it it was definitely reaching boiling point but I mean it's interesting because in season two you know before Rupert and me ended up doing that scene and that you know that whole stuff that we figured out like that we had to do like before that I don't know how to talk about it I actually don't know what to say yeah before (laughs) <laughs> you know, season two of so red. Oh, we were all uh, just the rest of We were all we were all wrapped by the time but they were left. They were left in the pandemic when we were coming back to do it. They were left to do this sex scene that they had read oh in the script. That we'd all read and all sat having dinner like what? <laughs> so, but then how does that? And then like you got the storyboards and. It just was building. God, the storyboard. You, you know, poor guys. You know, they both were like, okay, yeah, I guess we're going to do this scene. The, the, oh death, the death scene was awesome. You know, the scene where Rupert, was great. I had to pump his chest yeah. to, the, to the beat of staying alive and Rupert couldn't stop laughing. I was like, ha, 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 ha. I, I just think we were laughing so stop. much that day. That yeah, was, was crazy. Good. That was good. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Well, speaking of, uh, I guess... Uh, Emotions and, and energy on, on set, um, even though, as you as you've said, the, the main four of you are, are so close and are in almost every episode and are filming so much together and are even, you know, living in nearby spaces when, when coming back during the pandemic. What's it like to have, um, you know, someone like Boris when he's on set and, and Uncle George both bringing a different energy as, as a character to the character dynamic and, and bringing kind of a, a different energy to set? What's that like? I mean, Boris is great. He's such a lovely human being as well. You know, yeah. like, mm-hmm. most of my favorite times with Boris are when we're sitting in the kind of green room together, chatting, waiting to do a, a scene. You know, and he's a very insightful man. And I think this season, but this show in general, makes everybody think, what am I doing? What are my patterns? How do I deal? And, and you know, mm-hmm. Boris is very insightful about what he's, you know, discovered in his life about himself and, and those things. But he's he's also hilarious. And he has such an intensely serious character to play yeah when you catch him and you crack him and he actually gets the giggles and he does this kind of smile (laughs) it's so good he does this kind of smile and looks at you and his eyes wide (laughs) one eye and you're just like oh man i got him i got him it's the best yeah 
Yeah, Lauren and Boris are pretty much borderline unbreakable, like to Almost make them laugh. Yeah. Almost unbreakable. <laughs> well, we've got yeah. you, Lauren, a couple of times. <laughs> me, Toby and Perfect. Rupert are awful. Wait, I mean, me and Rupert yeah. are the worst, but it's mostly you and Rupert are the worst. You it's had the giggles over the word potato. I mean, I've never <laughs> in my life got to the place where potato was the word that was triggering you. I can't. <laughs> but you will look over, if you're off camera, you'll look over us and go, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? <laughs> you kill yeah. me. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah me and Rupert yeah. are fucking terrible. We're ter oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's late here. Yeah. Me and Rupert are terrible. We are always breaking character. But yeah, Lauren and Boris are pretty much uncrackable so when you get one of them to break character it's a really great feeling <laughs> even if it is not good but it is hilarious yeah. <laughs> i would say I'm, boris boris was in, amazing doing all kinds of amazing physical comedy after a knee surgery um, that yeah. was really oh, wow. impressive and um and yeah it's what it's great when we you know it's so often just the the four of us and um when we get to welcome new uh even like more experienced actors into our world it's uh it's it's great to open up that way also barbara sakawa is an actress who came Amazing. and did um episode 10 with us and yes she's such an Amazing. incredible actress and um that was that was a a whole improvised situation due to pandemic yeah. stuff and uh and it all happened at the last minute and um it was really a sort of incredible creative thing that came out of the this whole reality so her character and her her presence and her abilities and talent is really great so grateful she graced us with her presence yeah she i'm, I'm glad you went there lauren because it was um another great kind of um not misdirect but just kind of a, a change up that the show pulls on you like i was saying earlier with the pizza where you kind of get into the rhythm of Oh, this goofy scheme they're doing with the, yeah. the pizza and all that, and then suddenly it takes the turn with with Dorothy taking it into into her hands and stuff. And I think there's something similar where because um, Uncle George was in the first season, obviously, and and he's showing a lot a lot in season two, and and you, you kind of you know he's he's a very weird character who who does unexpected things, but I kind of get used to the rhythm of him, and then suddenly yeah. he's gone, and this new presence that I'm not not prepared for at all is totally different. Um, really makes that finale uh, so unsettling. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, agreed, yeah. Uh, she was brilliant. I mean, even from when she turns up in episode nine at the door, she just yeah. had this huge, dark veil. But yeah, and we had the to, to reshoot a scene because she, she was like, I can't see through it. How can you see me? And it was too dark, you know. But she does it so beautifully well, you know, and that, that is the beautiful thing, as Lauren said. Yeah, yeah. It's great to be graced with, with excellent actors coming in and just doing what is ostensibly a cameo, you know? Yeah. Yeah, she was amazing. Awesome. And uh, uh, now, not to put you on the spot again, but but oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> along with, with Aunt Josephine, I think my favorite part of the finale is that absolutely insane video that she has to watch by the church yeah. about, like, <laughs> killing yeah. her. And yeah. it's, it's kind of one of those, it's almost watching, like, a, a YouTube reaction or something. Like, we, the viewer, are watching you react to the video as much as yeah. um, we're watching the video. Um, if you just kind of want to talk it. about that in the way that the, the church is kind of, like, such a threat to Leanne specifically, as, as that video kind of explains, you know, um, mm. I feel like whenever Sean or Dorothy are kind of in their way, they're like, yeah, yeah, like, you people, but it was Leanne that messed this up and, and brought you into this. And sure. and that's really where I feel that like, wow, this is, these people are, are crazy and they yeah. really want, and they really have it out for her. Um, yeah. Well, I actually haven't seen the video yet. Oh, um, wow. No, I don't know what it's going to look like. Cause while we were shooting, you know, I had a scripty reading off, off camera, reading the lines that are, I was just looking at a blank screen, so I will be seeing the video when the rest of the world sees it too. But um, I think that the the presence of the church and stuff is 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 so so strong towards like the mid the mid section of the season, and then towards the end, you just you you just feel Leanne's rejection of it. And certainly, I mean, she I'm allowed to say what happens in episode ten, right? But, yeah. Like, this is, okay, cool. And like <laughs> certainly when she when she kills Aunt Josephine. 
it's like the ultimate rejection of mm-hmm. the church because you know Aunt Josephine represents you know when she says we used to sing songs about you like she's this character that you're not even sure if she exists she's so mm-hmm. sacred and then for her to turn up and Leanne to kill her and put her in the wall that's like <laughs> she's out man like she's done yeah. <laughs> and like, she's not out she's in the wall she's, well, she's in the wall <laughs> she's there forever now like, she's but it's such like the ultimate kind of you know piss off to the church <laughs> 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 yeah and so it's it, Nell got so excited awesome. at the beginning of this. They were like, you know, it, it, you know, you know, you understand your English, and so you know, if you want to use your own language, then that's fine. <laughs> so excited! But she said the word "piss" three times. <laughs> it's brilliant. I'm enjoying it as an Englishman. I'm enjoying it. You've got to say a couple as well, mate. You back me up. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I, 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 you know, I'm thinking back to you know two things. Roscoe, his performance. Yeah. When he plays, you know, what has actually occurred to him and then you suddenly realise by ten you're like, Boy, what yeah. did really occur? And then the the day we were lifting Nell out of that pile of mud that she'd been buried in by by Dorothy, it was just what was that? It was oatmeal and, and coffee powder. It was powder coffee and, chocolate and oatmeal and it was yeah. covered all over me and Laura. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot. It was that was an interesting day for us. <laughs> yeah. Both the girls were covered. We were in it. We yeah. were, in, were in the mud. Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Um, I guess that that was mostly what I wanted to, to ask you guys about season two. Were there any particular kind of um, moments uh, or, you know, things you got from night or, or anything kind of uh, uh, over the course of the season that uh, we haven't covered yet? funny i'm thinking back you know it's it's because of that pandemic right i'm sure it's like weirdly split, bifurcated it's yeah massively yeah your brain is just like when did we do that yeah. Yeah. january February. <laughs> so yeah i mean everything that's present in my mind is is episode six seven eight nine and ten so sure it just becomes that kind of you know which is it's a good portion of nearly half the season so it's that mm-hmm. kind of section that's still fresh in my mind and yeah, just that it was, it was so amazing what we accomplished with yeah. in a bubble. You know, it was just incredible. You know, that we yeah, still I, I mean, I was, to keep that story going. I was very yeah. impressed. You know, when I heard that season two was was coming out because I didn't know where you guys had had uh, kind of been left. Yeah, yeah, and I I just want to add to like what Toby was saying. Like, I just want to say like how amazing the crew were throughout the whole experience because as Lauren and Tobes were saying they had PPE and they had these masks and like they were working like crazy we were doing six day weeks and the crew just rallied and were phenomenal and you know I don't know how they didn't drop dead from exhaustion like they were amazing so um, you know we were really lucky to have such an amazing group of people around us really just wanting to make this show and make it the best we can like we didn't want to cut corners we wanted to make it great and it was just really such an ensemble effort. And obviously you only see like four, five, six of us on, on camera, but mm-hmm. you know, so it took an army to make it work through a pandemic. And um, yeah, I just feel really lucky that we got to experience that and experience it with such great people. Yeah. Awesome. I All right. And so uh, I hear that you guys are, are uh, starting to get scripts maybe and, and gearing up for season three a little bit. Hopefully that will be a little less stressful in the real world. Or yeah, you'll at least have <laughs> safety figured out by now. Well, exactly. Yeah, we've got it figured out because we did those four episodes. We, we've kind of figured out the safety to a degree. So we're, we're back to it. And I think we've got all 10 episodes. You know, it's exciting. I've awesome. only read seven, but uh, <laughs> so I hope I don't die in episode eight and nine. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I've got seven, so they're good. They they they're great. You know, we've got a lot of work to do, um, but that's the fun part. You know, I'm looking forward to going back and seeing everyone. You know. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, Nell, Toby, Lauren, thank you so much for joining me, and to everybody watching this video, thanks for joining us for this 92Y Talks event. Uh, season two of Servant is uh, streaming on Apple TV Plus now. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. (laughs) Thanks a lot.